Last time on Junior Rangers, Darren introduced us to Bernard the Bearded Dragon. Now, Bernard's skin looks very rough, but when you stroke it, it's actually quite soft. This was quite a surprise. But then Darren asked us to see what other types of skins we could find on the animals at Longleat. Let's see how many there are. And we'll find out how mud protects an animal's skin. This is Junior Rangers. of different animals here at Longleat and lots of different types of skin. Some animals have skin like ours, some have feathers and some have scaly skin. Most of the animals here belong to a group of animals called mammals. People are mammals too and so is Nico the gorilla who is enjoying a snack on his island. Now Nico and these monkeys are covered in hair. Or is it fur? So what's the difference? Hair and fur are actually the same thing, but fur only grows to a certain length. But the hair on our heads is different. It keeps on growing and growing and we need to have it cut. This is Alicia. She has been growing her hair for five years and you can see it's very long. And if she carried on growing it, it would reach down to her feet. This doesn't happen with any other animals, so that's why you won't see one of these monkeys having a haircut. A very different type of skin can be found on Longleat's reptiles, like this tortoise. And here's the corn snake. And the royal python. This is Bernard's cousin, the Iguana, and if you have a close look at its skin, you can see that it is very scaly. It looks like armour. But reptiles are not the only creatures that have scales. Another animal with scale is the fish. These ones are food for the sea lions. You can see that it also has scaly skin. If you stroke it from head to toe, it feels very smooth. This helps it glide through the water. But if you stroke it back the other way, it feels very rough. Much rougher than the reptiles. Unlike birds, who have a soft covering of feathers, all birds have three things in common. They have beaks, wings, and are covered in feathers. Young birds are covered in soft downy feathers, and they get harder as they get older so they can fly. But not all birds fly. In the East African Game Reserve, you can see the ostriches. Now these are very large birds, but they can't fly. But there is an animal at Longleat that flies that isn't a bird. Can you think what it is? Now to find the answer, we need to go down to Old Joe's mine. So, as John hangs up some fruit, we'll see what comes to eat it. What could it be? It's the bats. Now, the bats aren't birds at all. They have no beaks and no feathers. And look, they are covered in fur. In fact, the bats are more closely related to you and me than they are to the parrots. The hippos and rhinos don't have any scales, feathers or fur. They have skin like ours, only much rougher. They both live in Africa, where it can be very sunny. And as they don't have any fur or feathers to protect their skin, they can get sunburn, which can be very painful. Now the hippo can go into the water to cool off. But we're going down to the rhino house with Ian to see how the rhinos solve the problem. This is Winston, look. Winston. What we've got to do today is put some mud on him. And what mud does, it protects them from the sun. And also you can see, look, it gets rid of all the flaky skin. I've got a bucket of wood here, look. You need to get your hands dirty, I'm afraid. Great big handfuls like that. And then just rub it in. 
Ooh, this is great fun. And it looks like Winston is really enjoying it too. This is like a moisturiser that helps the skin. Well, Winston's got a fresh coating of mud to help protect his skin from sunburn and parasites. This will keep his skin healthy and looking good. My mum says it works for people too. Mm, you can try it first, Joe. I'll be busy downloading this week's activity sheet. If you'd like a copy, just click on the green download button and check out the other programmes as well for more activity sheets and details of competitions, discount vouchers and special events. So, we have seen animals with skin like ours, with hair and fur, feathers and different types of scales. Scientists use these different features to help put animals into groups. For example, all birds have feathers and all reptiles have scales. But what about the millipede we saw in the last show? That didn't have any skin at all. That's because most mini beasts have their skeleton on the outside. It's called an exoskeleton. Hmm, I wonder what we would look like with our skeleton on the outside. Now that's a scary thought, Joe. But come and join us for our next show when we'll be looking at some fairy tales and asking who's afraid of the big bad wolf?